god! Oh my god, that was tense! Evening campers, I'm gonna come out and say it. All of 10 seconds ago, I finished Shani Move 2's Polar Vortex, who was recommended to me by Sam. I'll put her Instagram here. She doesn't have a YouTube channel. And I took a punt. I took a punt on Sam's recommendation. Like right from the offset, Shani Mutu pulls the punches right from the beginning, all the way up to the end. That was outstanding of a novel. Shani Mutu, how have I never heard of you before? And maybe like you, you've not heard of her, but this is Shani Mutu's fifth book, Polar Vortex, which follows the story of Priya and her relationship with her girlfriend, Alex, but also whose presence is, is haunting right from the beginning, Prakash. Priya is in a stable relationship with Alex, but from the first scene, a dream sequence, Priya is having sex with a man and as the pages start to unfurl as we thumb our way through this story is that it's hinted that this man is Prakash. Now Prakash and Priya have not spoken to each other for a good number of years. Priya has actually staved off social media. She's removed herself from the internet because Prakash during some time in their lives was stalking her and as soon as she moves on to the internet Prakash is there straight away talking to her but Priya for some reason decides to invite Prakash over to the house. Priya is able to glean that Prakash is married and has kids, but when he turns up to the house on his own, we don't really know what the motive behind his appearance is, but equally what we don't know is Priya's motive. Why has she invited Prakash over? And Prakash would also like to know that answer. Another person who would also like to know the answer is Alex. She, she's very cynical and standoffish to why Priya is even inviting this man to their to their home in Ontario, Canada. For, for what she knows, Prakash would be the, the, the worst person to invite, to, to visit, to, to stay in some way, shape or form. And there's questions about what does Priya want in Prakash? And this really is the heart of the story. Now, it might sound quite straightforward as I'm describing this, and you, you might already be piecing together what this story is about. But I assure you, this is a love triangle on a completely different calibre. Everyone is unreliable. Everyone has their their history to them yes th these people aren't 20 30 years old they're 50 year old people their history is rich and the history between Priya and Prakash is deeper and denser than that of Priya and Alex and Prakash knows that and he really wants to interweave himself throughout this relationship but what does it mean to love someone? Can you love someone without being in a relationship with them? Can you celibately be in a relationship with someone? Can you love someone and give them your being but not want to be with that person? Prakash asks Priya, knowing that she's lesbian, that how does she know that she doesn't want a man if she's not experienced it? And Priya succumbs to that idea and has sex with Prakash. As soon as they have sex, their their relationship, their their friendship, their their platonic values get muddy very much straight away. But Priya, all the way through this novel, is thinking, is thinking about Prakash in that in that mindset, under that gaze. And Prakash 
by sure is looking at Priya, thinking the exact same thing. And Alex, Alex can sense this all throughout, but Priya is trying to second guess everyone's thoughts throughout this. Throughout these four chapters, Priya is trying to understand everyone's point of view. And in chapter three, where the, the, the narrative switches into Alex's mind, even though she's trying to understand why Prakash is in their house and what Priya's objective is in doing this, we are completely like swept in 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 subject. As Prakash tells his story about being an immigrant, about being a refugee, Mutu takes hold of the Syrian refugee crisis and uses it through Prakash's and Priya's story to interweave about immigrants. What is it to be an Indian, a Ugandan, a Trinidadian citizen, but want to find a place to call home? What is it to have your home not wanting you? What if your country, what if the safe haven, what if the, the given country that you were put on this earth rejects you? What if your own home doesn't even want you to be there? This is not a love triangle. This is a pressure cooker of ideas. And we are going to look at the nuances between love, relationship, race, culture, queerness. It's all condensed by these three people. And as Prakash's home country rejected him, he leaves the house, but Priya follows Prakash. They take a long country drive. And as the forces of nature want to repel them, it only brings them closer. Mutu, I don't know how you have done it. You managed to take the most cliche, the, the tropius, the like boring, done to death relationship writing standard that is the love triangle and get into it and just pull apart the, the like atomic core, just like the building blocks of what a love triangle is and make it this dynamic, punchy, chaotic mess that just sits between these pages. I have, I have no idea how you even, like, did it. Because from, like, the offset, Prakash is haunting throughout this novel. Just permeates through it. And it's not even, like, halfway through he even, like, comes into the story. But you know Prakash. You know everything about him. And as soon as he comes in, he is ready to take the, the wiring, like the thing that you think is Prakash, and just completely like reconnect it all. And you're just thrown by, by him, but you're thrown by Alex. You don't even know who like Priya is at the end of this. Like everything you thought was a given is just, it's just like swept away. I've never felt so tense in a book. I didn't even like know what was going to happen, but that's the best part. You know what's going to happen and it does happen and you don't even feel like a resolution from it because these characters are just so well crafted. They're so complex and, and oh, I it's the age. The, everything that you learned about these characters because there's so much time to cover there's so much time that even throughout these little plot points and little divots of history and these little these little hints that are kind of like slotted between the door like you don't even know about it and it just changes everything like you hate everyone but you completely understand like why certain things happen or why they're withholding secrets between them. Mutu just got under my skin with this. I cannot tell you how much you need to go out and buy Mutu's book 
because it's phenomenal. I wasn't even expecting this one to like take the Reich from out to me. I wasn't even, I think that's why I'm like so like bamboozled by Mutu's polar vortex because she, like you feel as though you'll feel as though for like the first 100 pages, you know exactly what is going to happen. And there's a few things that don't seem right. And like from like the first 20 pages, you're thinking something is like really off here. And then Prakash comes in and they go, all the cards are on the table. And you're just like, what is even this situation? Like how, how, how are the characters even going to navigate any of this? And then they leave the house and you're still just like, all the information that's been given to me, like, I, I, oh, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. I wasn't even expecting this. I'm getting it, people. Uh, I, it's an honor um, to get the drill for a book I chose. I want to uh, thank my parents. I wouldn't be here without you. Um, the creator for aligning this and the author for writing the book. And to you, to all of you out there reading, thank you. You wouldn't expect this. I wouldn't expect this. We're getting it out! We're getting it out! It's happening. It's happening, people. I have to move my Christmas tree for this. Buy it.